Greetings everyone, welcome back to Catech Reviews, and yes, it's been forever since I have said that in any context, especially when it's about a movie review. Yeah, I usually do one of these per year, maybe two if I'm feeling uppity. This is the one a year. Enjoy it. Well, yeah, I might get to because of a certain pony franchise that's coming back this year in movie form. But outside of that, this is your one movie review. Drink it in, man. And it follows Kedic tradition because it's about video game movies. How many video game movies have I done? Both Street Fighter movies. The Doom movie. Uh, God. Uh, that one. Uh, that one still hurts. Really, really bad. I mean, seriously, that hurts. Mm, just thinking about it. It's, I've done horror movies and such. And I've also done Silent Hill Revelation as well. So, this is going to count Silent Hill and Silent Hill Revelation. So, this is going to count as movie review based on video games number seven. Yeah, I've done a lot of these things. In 1995, a guy by the name of Paul Anderson, the same director as Monster Hunter, I might review that if I'm feeling gamey, decided to do a movie interpretation of the then- Uber successful Mortal Kombat. This was around the release of Mortal Kombat 3, nearly, that the game was released in the middle of 2's Titanic run. The movie was cheesy, over the top, and the lines, especially Sang Soon's lines, have become the stuff of legend, so much so that the actor reprised his role in Mortal Kombat 11! That's how much that movie has become beloved. Nearly 14 years, close to 16, since the release of that movie, and nearly Nearly 13 years since the last attempt at a Mortal Kombat movie. Let's not talk about it. We get to Mortal Kombat 2021. Soft reboot of the movie franchise. Uh, this isn't the first Mortal Kombat movie. This is technically the fourth. Because there was an animated Mortal Kombat movie known as Scorpion's Revenge. I was released just last year, right soon after this movie was announced. Now, they went into extreme casting to cast everybody avnetically diverse, verse, and a bunch of first time actors, except that is for the star of the movie. Who had been trying to break in the lead roles doing minor movies beforehand. Unfortunately, this is not that movie because he plays a rather boring guy by the name of Cole, who is a insert character for this movie. Of course, if you know Mortal Kombat, the games are based around a fighting tournament to defend and protect the realms from evil realms. 
every so long or so, a fighting tournament is held. The Evil Outworld Realm has won the last nine more combats. If they win the tenth one, they get to invade. Basic story from this that isn't really brought up that much in the games outside of Mortal Kombat 2's opening crawl. With that basic premise out of the way, forget about it. There isn't really much of a tournament here. Except for in the last third of the movie where a pseudo tournament where all the good guys fight all the bad guys and all the good guys win in the end. In fact, the movie, ironically, ends where it starts. In an MMA gym. In the same MMA ring in which we first meet Cole. A down and out fighter who's lost his edge in the MMA ring. Who has a girlfriend who has a wife and, and her loving mother to fight for. But that's not where the movie technically starts. No, it starts with the pretty much assassination and genocide of the Shirai Ryu clan by Beyond, also known as Sub-Zero. This is one of the better fight scenes in the entire movie. And pay attention, there's a key plot point in this fight, although you wouldn't know it un unless you paid super attention. I won't spoil it here, but it's something so gimmicky and obvious that it will make you groan once you figure it out. Each of the Mortal Kombat combatants with a K have the dragon logo that is synonymous with Mortal Kombat as a birthmark symbolizing their participation in the tournament. This birthmark is passed on if you manage to defeat a warrior in combat and kill them. This is going to be Critical for Sonya, ironic, the one woman character in this movie outside Melina, who just so happens not to have a mark. Huh. Funny. Not so funny. Cole meets up with the other Mortal Kombat combatants. In fact, all of the first eight characters from the original game make appearances in this movie. Raiden does nothing, as for the usual, and he's pretty much an exposition dump. His actor is not as charismatic as character Christopher Lambert's 1995 chill but wise and sort of snarky performance as the Thunder God. This guy is just the guy that they put the writing costume and has the drop exposition. But the actual combatant actors actually do a good job. Especially Liu Kang and Kano get my thumbs up. In fact, Kano practically steals all film. This is not something that you're not hearing from other reviewers. This is something that is verified by the movie itself. Pretty much, the biggest thing going into a Mortal Kombat movie that this movie needed to succeed is basically fights being good and decent enough, and, of course, fatalities. Now, the first two movies did not do a good job in the fatality portion of the film. After all, they were PG and PG-13, respectively. This, however, is a straight R. 
and it shows. Fatalities happen early, but not very often in this movie. And they are really given the time to shine. The CG for some of these, mainly Sub-Zero's arm rip of Jack's, is really impressive. And even, even the way that one of the major Mortal Kombat villains, Goro, goes down might make you impressed. But here's the key point. The fatalities are ripped straight from the game itself. A lot of the older ones, think MK1 and MK2 mostly, because of the character list. Although Kung Lao's fatality is ripped straight from 11 itself. Nice. Outside of that, the characters' personalities bounce off of each other well, and exhibit the same personalities as they do in the games. Great. All the characters are done well, except mainly two. Molina, and most importantly, Reptile. Reptile's CG-only design is Hideous. It's one of the worst CGI designs I've ever seen in any movie, period. I mean, it's that ugly. Thank God they got his moveset and even his invisibility correct. That I'll give them a lot of props for. Reptile is acting like Reptile. Sadly, he doesn't look like Reptile, which would have seriously helped. Same thing with Molina. She's got the moveset, she's got the size, she's got the cannibal bloodlust, everything else is right. Except for the look. And there's even a few deep cuts here, like Raiko from MK4 somehow having a spot in this, and the Tira from Deadly Alliance is actually used as a hench vampire. And yes, the classic 95 Mortal Kombat theme does get remixed and used a couple of times in the film, which is nice Easter egg and nice touch. In fact, Easter eggs there are plenty if you are one of a careful eye. That make nods to other characters that don't make appearances in this movie. And references to the games themselves. But, in terms of the story and plot, it's too exposition heavy at times. When all we wanted to do is see these characters fight. Which is a typical of modern video game movies. But... Thankfully, it's not done as ear-spittingly bad as other movies in the genre. Action scenes are done well enough. Enough, they're not going to blow your head off like John Vick's fight scenes or anything. But at least it's a decent popcorn watch. And the movie is done in under two hours. Great. I love a great runtime. No post credit scene to worry about, so there isn't much of a post tease, although Johnny Cage is teased at the end of the movie in the last scene. I agree with the internet. This for Johnny Cage. There are very few things that I agree with the wrestling internet about. This is one of them. The Miz as Johnny Cage is like Mike Mizanin's ultimate role gifted to him by God. He is practically Johnny Cage in a wrestling ring anyway. So let's make that happen. Hashtag it. All in all, this movie might not be as memorable or as cheesy or as 
well dialogued as the 1995 film, and it will probably be quickly forgotten based on its story, story and character beats until there's a sequel. But, this is the most accurate Mortal Kombat movie since the original 95 classic. And, it's one of the most lovingly rendered additions of a video game movie that actually does its source material differently while also through its easter eggs and adherence to fatality accuracy and character accuracy actually lives up to the Mortal Kombat legacy. This movie isn't perfect, but it certainly built the building blocks to become a perfect movie. Let's just hope that the sequel to this, in a couple of years hopefully post-pandemic, pandemic doesn't go the way of Annihilation and become a joke. Let's hope Johnny Cage's appearance is actually the missing icing on this cake. Mortal Kombat The Movie 2021 it's a very strong 8 out of 10. Because with movie catech reviews, we stick to the old 10 score. You can watch this on HBO Max. Or, if you're brave enough, the end of a mask on and can stay socially distanced, it's in the theater. And for Xfinity customers, for the next couple of days, if you're a user of Xfinity Cable, they are doing their watchathon. You can use the HBO Max app over your cable box over the next couple of days to watch the movie for free. Even without paying for an HBO Max subscription. So take advantage of that to see this movie. And at least until the end of today, Godzilla vs. Kong. Just gonna give you that heads up. So tell me what you thought about the new Mortal Kombat movie. What deep cuts would you want them to make in the sequel? And do you want the Miz as Johnny Cage? That's the primary question. Do that down in the comment section below, and for more reviews on ponies, entertainment, video games, and wrestling content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to stay notified. Go to quest for your videos or not on any major set schedule yet. We hope to fix that by our 11th anniversary in June. Until next time, I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana. I'll see you next time. Have a good day.